Hey everyone, Charlie Morgan here and welcome back to another training video. So in today's training video, we are going to be discussing something called Trojan Horse Retainers. Um, this is basically a really awesome strategy I thought up um, that you can use to sign more clients, um, close more deals and basically make your sales process as frictionless as humanly possible. Okay, so I've developed this strategy um, because you know I've you know now that we're working with quite a few different agencies of, as of me recording this video, um, I've started to observe that agencies that have the strongest offers, well they get the most clients, which makes a lot of sense. And so what I've tried to do is take this idea of having a really strong offer to an absolute extreme, um, and taking it to an extreme, but also maintaining um, the integrity of the retainer system so we can get this sort of long-term monthly recurring revenue on board. Um, and I've come up with this Trojan horse strategy. Um, now for those of you that aren't familiar with the Trojan horse, uh, it's a pretty wildly renowned um, myth, myth from Greek mythology, uh, and I'll sort of explain it very, very briefly in a second. Um, but for those of you that understand the premise of what the Trojan horse is, then what we're basically doing with this strategy is getting the client on board and introducing the retainer on a delayed basis. Now we're not doing free trials, we're not working for free, there's a very, very specific way we do this. Um, and I've introduced it to a few different people uh, on coaching calls already and a couple of people in DMs and they've tried it out and they actually are seeing some pretty damn good results with this thing. So I'm really excited to share it with you. Um, I don't believe that this strategy or um, method is available in any other program or course. I guess that's the beauty of thinking up your own stuff is, you know, it gives your clients a genuine advantage. So let's jump in and explore the strategy. So here's what we're gonna cover. Um, so basically we're gonna talk about what are Trojan horse retainers. Um, then I'm gonna give you a cheat sheet for Trojan horse retainers. Um, and that cheat sheet will contain information on um, e-commerce, lead generation. Um, and then I've got at the bottom here rules for the Trojan horse retainer model. Um, it's not actually a topic in the video, but it will be sort of covered as we go throughout. There's some very specific things to remember and bear in mind as we um, learn this strategy, because you know it, what we do is, is by making the sales process frictionless, um, it, it becomes quite easy for the client to take advantage of you. Um, but we're not going to let that happen because you know we still need to get some commitment from the client and some some skin in the game. Um, because this is the thing about about growing someone's business and business owners in general, is they want risk-free growth, right? It's what they want. The closer you can come to that in your offering, the closer you are to having as many clients as you could ever need. Um, and the problem we have is that clients want to put all the risk onto the agency and agencies want to put all of the risk onto the client. And this manifests itself in terms of getting your clients to pay retainers without a guarantee. That's the best scenario for the agency because they keep the money regardless of whether they perform or not. And then the client, they want to work, um, they want the agency to work on a complete commission basis um, because that's the least risk-free thing for them. And so what this model does here is it actually creates this sort of non-binary um, state where we're gonna combine both of those two extremes. And what I've observed with non-binary thinking when we take two different extremes that actually you know, serve each party and combine them together, well, we get this negotiation outcome that is very, 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 very good for both the agency and the business owner. And so by developing this strategy and putting these two extremes together, we win and I'm gonna help you win, and I'm so excited to share this one with you because when this came to me, I was like, holy shit, this is probably gonna be the way forward for pretty much every agency two or three years from now. Uh, if you implement this and your competition does not, then five years from now, you will have all the business and your competition will have none. So first of all, what are Trojan horse retainers? Well, the Trojan horse myth, quote unquote, originates from the ancient Greek story of Greek soldiers capturing the city of Troy uh, by sending in a giant wooden horse. You know, they deceive the city to accept the horse as a gift. They feigned a retreat um, with this big horse and they said, hey, Troy, here's a horse for you. And then Troy, they were like, oh, yeah, this is an awesome gift. They're, they're finally giving up this 10 year siege. Um, and then we all know the story, the, the Troy, they let the um, the horse, this big wooden horse, into their city and then the soldiers are like hidden in the belly of the um, of the horse and then they come out in the night and then they slaughter everyone in the city, they open the gates and then that's how um, the Greeks captured Troy. It's a very famous story um, and it's a myth and it's one of these stories that, it, the reason it's continued and it's so famous is because it's an archetype. We can understand the nature of the story and what it's trying to tell us about strategy and war and human nature without 
actually having to articulate it. It's, it sort of takes this, this archetype that we understand so deeply about ourselves and projects it onto a story. And that's why it resonates so well with us. So when we can apply this strategy to business, we become very dangerous. When we can apply archetypal war stories to the, to the st strategy of our business model, um, things start to really move forward and happen for us. And, you know, the siege, it was supposed to go for 10 years, but the Greeks basically took down Troy within one day with the Trojan horse. They, they thought this thing up and they were like, damn, well, why don't we just do this? And it worked. So what does this have to do with client acquisition for your agency? Well, the Greeks knew that Troy was simply too hard to take over head on. And that the only thing they could do to get what they truly wanted was to take an indirect approach. And they realized they had to give Troy a gift. And inside that gift was the vehicle for them to truly get what they want. Now, they wanted to capture this city, but they couldn't do it just by attacking the walls and trying to, like, siege the city. They realized they had to get inside the city without the actual city realizing and that's a very difficult thing to do. And the only way they could do that was by providing this shiny object, this gift that allowed them to sort of get behind the walls of the enemy and wreak havoc from the inside. Now, I'm not saying that you want to get behind the walls of your clients and wreak havoc from the inside. You know, we're doing this with people's best interests, but the same principle applies. If you're just running up against a brick wall, trying to sell upfront retainers or anything like that and it's it's proving difficult then what we want to do is try and figure out a way to sort of get into the client's business and provide them such good results that they have no choice but to pay us a retainer that's what we're doing here is we're getting into them we're proving to them that we're really good at what they do and then when we've proved it to them and when they rely on us for the growth of their business that's when we introduce a retainer and you say look if you don't pay me you're going to lose me and the client will pay you because loss aversion is much stronger than gain. So, you know, going back to this, the gift allowed them to get behind the enemy's walls and attack from within, obviously bypassing defenses and rendering them useless. And the same can be true for business owners paying large retainers for the agency. You know, after reading into this story and understanding it, um, I realized we can apply the strategy to acquisition. How? Well, we do this by delaying the retainer, getting the client on board and proving to them you can deliver results. Business owners will pay you if you can deliver them results. Now, the problem comes when you say you can deliver results, but the business owner doesn't trust you because they've been burned by God knows how many agencies in the past, or they just don't trust you, or they haven't got the confidence you can deliver for them. And so they don't buy from you. And then they go on to the next agency and they don't buy from them either because people are just, you know, they're like, hey, pay me like $2,000 now. Like, you know, it's not going to work. Well, it does work, actually. That's a complete lie. You can sign hundreds of clients by charging upfront retainers, as we've done for our agency. However, this makes it a lot easier. And I honestly think that with this strategy, um, if you can implement it, you'll, you'll destroy everyone. So this, this is not a free trial strategy. We never work for free, and we never take on clients who aren't willing to pay up. Now, you might be wondering, well, how the hell am I supposed to sign clients and delay the retainer without getting them to pay me up front. That sounds like a paradox. How does it work? Um, don't worry, I've got a very, very good way of positioning this and making sure that clients do have some skin in the game and that you do get paid some money um, and that there is some commitment. So how do we negotiate this deal and get clients on board without actually getting them to pay a retainer? Now, before I answer that question, this is probably the most important slide in this whole video. This strategy only works if you have A plus service delivery. This strategy is only intended for people who struggle to get clients, not those who struggle to keep them. If retention for your agency is less than four months per client, then this strategy will not work for you. If you, the only, the way this strategy works is we go to the clients and we say, hey, I want to work for you on a pay on results basis, commission based, pay me when you get paid. It's as simple as that. I don't profit until you do. We get the client on board and then we deliver a service that's so good that they have no choice but to keep us on board. And the only way they can do that is by paying a retainer. Now, if you get someone on board and you're shit at what you do and you don't deliver results, then they're never going to pay the retainer. And if you're not landing clients, then the chances are you're probably just not good enough at what you do yet. And that's fine because it's a skill you can learn and improve. Um, however, if, you, if you're not able to del deliver incredible service, then don't bother with this strategy, right? Because the, this whole strategy is built around and revolves around being able to deliver services that are so good that clients, they'll pay you any amount of money for you to stay on board. So here's the play. And it's a six step process. And if you follow this and you do it properly, then, well, you're going to sign an awful lot of clients. And, you know, the key to this is actually being good at what you do because you sign them 
and then if you're good, then you keep them. So the strategy is, is built to get people in the door and to get a foot in the door of the client's ad accounts and their funnels and to do such a good job for them that they realize that they need to pay you. So number one, reach out to clients and tell them you're willing to work on a commission or pay on results basis. Number two, book appointments with prospects who are expecting a pay on results relationship or commission based marketing work. And then I've accidentally skipped from three to four, but step three, um, run through the sales script we provide, getting the prospects emotional and primed to buy. Now, here's the cool thing. Step four or five on the slide. When the prospect asks how they can get started, you tell them there is a setup fee that covers your overheads having them on board and that you'll then work for them on a commission basis for a period of time. Now, don't worry about how you frame this or the objections around it. I know what you're thinking. Shit, how am I going to get people to do that? I've got it all planned out for you, so don't stress. Um, and then the final step is what you then do is you advise them that after the agreed period, you will introduce a retainer that will be paid in addition to the existing commission. So the strategy is we reach out to business owners and we say, hey, John, uh, I run a company and we partner with stores like yours and we grow them and we work on a complete commission basis. You know, we'll take 10% of the revenue we generate for you and you don't pay us unless you profit. And then they book the meeting and then they come on board and you say, okay, well, we get you started with a setup fee. I know you're expecting pure pay and results, but we just need to see some commitment. And I've got how you position that later. Um, and then you set the expectation in the initial sales call, the onboarding call, um, that in three months from now, the client will be paying you a retainer. You say, look, I want you to, I want to be transparent with you, John. The commission-based work is purely for me to get my foot in the door to prove to this thing to you that it actually works. Because I know it works, but you don't know it works. And the best way for me to make sure you're comfortable with it and confident paying for it is that we prove it to you. And the best way to do that is to actually do it for you so you can experience it firsthand. And once we've done that, and once you're happy with us, then we will be introducing a retainer. So 60 days from now, you're going to be paying us $2,000 a month, but you're going to be loving, you're going to love paying that $2,000 a month because it's going to return itself 20 times over. Does that make sense, John? And then he'll say yes, and then you sign him up. So that's how we do it. And this is extremely easy to sell. And it can also be used as a concession to get prospects off the fence. So this doesn't have to be your primary strategy for acquisition. This can just be a sort of back pocket thing that you have that you have structured in your business so that if you do run into an objection that you cannot overcome for whatever reason, uh, which is gonna be quite rare, um, then you can just say, hey, well, listen, this is a, a, a fit beyond belief. It was gonna work so well for you and I do not want anything to stand in the way of us working together. So how about we do this? And then you introduce them to the idea of the 60 day commission basis with the setup fee. This, this, this play, this strategy, it screams confidence. It, it, it radiates, it oozes confidence, right? And conviction from your perspective. And it's very hard to say no to someone that is willing to work like this because it implies that they are so confident in what they do and that they firmly believe they can sell. Remember, sales is a transfer of conviction and belief and confidence. And the best way to do that and to have that is not to have a great tone in your voice or to have the best case studies. It's to actually have an offer that literally just says, I am confident. <laughs> like all the best offers in the world, they just translate to this will work for you. Here is why I'm confident. So for example, um, if you're booking meetings with prospects who are expecting a retainer and they won't budge, then you can always introduce this Trojan horse retainer to get them closed. Like if you're talking to someone, like it's, it's so painful when you talk to someone and they're a good fit for you, right? But you can't, there's something there and you can't seem to get them to come around to your way of thinking and buy from you. And like, you know that if they bought from you, that they could potentially stay with you for like six months. You know that they're gonna be a good fit for you, but they don't know that and they don't buy, and then you you part ways and you potentially lose tens of thousands of dollars. But if you just said, hey, well listen, how about we just do this little 60 day, 30 day thing, and then you're pretty much sorted. So very powerful strategy to use as a concession in negotiation. So remember, remember this, like, remember this strategy is only effective when you can truly deliver for the client. Okay, you must be able to deliver them to the moon so that when the retainer kicks in, they're happy to pay it and stay on board because people will pay you for the results you provide. And no business owner in their right mind is going to stop paying. Like if, if you're, if you, let's say you onboard a client, let's just take Ecom for example, you onboard a client and they are, you know, they get you on board and you come in and you start, gen and they, maybe they're getting like a 3X ROAS to begin with. And then you take them from a 3X ROAS to a 7X ROAS over 60 days. 
and you're you're producing them ridiculous returns they're making loads of money with you they are not two months from now going to say oh i'm not going to pay you anymore because you know blah 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 they're going to they're going to pay through the teeth for you because you're valuable and you're good at what you do and that's how you keep clients and that's how you grow an agency it's by actually ironically being very 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 good at what you do so you know it's it's a really good strategy um but it's only good for agencies that actually have a good service delivery if you don't have that this thing won't work because you'll onboard clients and then you'll do all this hard work for them and you won't get anything from it because you're not going to get commission because you're not delivering results um and yeah so like if your issue is just sales and booking meetings and getting clients and your service delivery is perfect then this this thing will absolutely bang for you it will be it will it will be the thing you need because if you can if you can just delay the gratification of the retainer for two to three months knowing that you're going to keep the client for like 12 months then why wouldn't you do it it makes you more competitive it screams confidence the clients will love it and it works incredibly well so here's a cheat sheet to answer some common questions um, that people have had when I've introduced this thing to them so I've, I've sort of been you know rolling this out to a few people in different niches um, in the program at the moment and um, and so far we had some great feedback um, I've had a lot of questions and I wanted to sort of put together a cheat sheet here to sort of answer these questions and you know just make sure that you fully understand the strategy and exactly what it is that we're talking about here so so let's take a look right okay so here is a cheat sheet for trojan horse retainers um this basically shows you how to use the trojan horse retainer model for your agency um this is a great way to sign clients that are on the fence or if you're just getting started and need to make a bold statement to sign people up so yeah, it's pretty cool. So disclaimer, um, this strategy only works if you have the bite to match the bark. Um, I'm not sure if this is a British saying or not, but basically what it means um, is like you can have a dog that barks really confidently, but if it gets in a fight and hasn't got the bite to match its bark, it's probably gonna get beaten in the fight, so to speak. So if you if you come across as super coming across as super confident with service delivery and sales is awesome and everything, but if you can't actually deliver on that confidence, then nothing really happens um, you know you can sign up 100 clients on a 60-day commission program but if you have shitty service none of them will make it to the retainer remember the goal here is to get clients for retainers the goal hasn't changed the objective of our outreach and our methods and our sales and our script the goal is the same it's to sign clients on that sweet monthly retainer uh, this is just a slightly different method of doing this. When we sign clients, we're not doing it because we want to get these commission deals. We're doing it so we can, you know, fill our pockets with nice, consistent revenue. Um, this approach is just an easier way of doing that, but we have to delay it. So, you know, like if you if you're not if you're confident that you can deliver but you can it would be like the um, actual trojan horse the greeks use um in troy you know, imagine if that thing was filled with untrained soldiers there'd be no point getting that horse in the door and into that castle if the soldiers couldn't actually follow up on their intentions so if you get a client on board for a commission program and you can't deliver then well there's no point so um trojan horse retainers e-commerce so here's the sort of workflow um and basically like exactly what you need to do to make this thing work and i've already covered this in the six steps but i fleshed out a few examples here so obviously step number one is to approach brands and tell them you're willing to work on a pure commission basis um, you do not have to overcomplicate this um, you could literally reach out to business owners and say hey john um, i can grow your brand um, on a commission basis i only profit when you do i only get paid when you do and the only time money hits my bank account is after it hits yours let me know if you're open to discussing us doing that for you like business owners they want to hear it business owners dream of proposals like that so you don't even have to get fancy with it just a quick one to two sentence thing like hey steve checked out your brand confident i can grow your your business on a commission basis i'm literally like a salesperson. you don't pay me anything until you get paid but just with facebook ads works a charm so here's an example just some copy i wrote up um this i haven't actually tested this but this is the sort of along the lines of the language you'd use in this email just like hey john love lo love what you're doing it your brand quick idea to run by you i run a company that partners with brands like your brand and delivers them growth and customers on a um, pure commission pay and results basis it's the definition of risk-free growth i was curious to see if you'd be open to exploring that no catch only profit when you do are you open to this idea simple this you know people overcomplicate copywriting and they spend hours and hours writing fancy email copy when the best offer will always be the best copy if that makes sense like the best the best copy in the world is just stating a ridiculously strong offer and that's that's all you have to do there's no you know it's like 
when it comes to marketing and all of this stuff and outreach, like people overcomplicate the act of booking meetings. All you have to do is be so good at what you do that you can deliver it in a way that basically makes it risk-free for the client and simulates a lot of confidence in their mind and they will book a meeting with you. We don't need to spend hours and hours testing different pieces of copy. You just need to be really good at what you do and that's all that matters. Um, so this is the second step is to get the prospect on the phone, run through the normal sales script and obviously you know, you go through the sales script and the way we pitch it is we wait for them to ask how they can work with us or how much it costs. Um, and this is the interesting part, right? So what you're gonna do is when they ask how they move forward and what the what the commission structure looks like and how much you charge, you want to explain there's a setup fee of a certain amount, but if they buy now, it's only a certain amount. So we wanna use incentive-based pricing here. Um, and obviously what you need to do is you need to justify this setup fee, right? In psychology, um, the way the human brain works is we have something called the reason respecting tendency, which is a cognitive bias that states that we are more likely to be persuaded by something or someone to do something if they give us one or two or even more very solid and logical reasons to do it. So if you just say you charge a setup fee, then they're, they're going to be like, oh, I'm not doing that because you said this was commission. But if you charge the setup fee and you give them one or two extremely logical reasons as to why they need to pay that, then it removes the objection, the doubt they have about paying it, and it justifies your request, right? So what you wanna do, and I've, I've scripted this out um, towards the bottom here, and I'll walk you through the script in a second, but what you're doing here, when you set, when you explain the setup fee, you're explaining that the fee goes towards your team and the overheads associated with handling their account. And you make it clear that you as the owner only profit when they do. So let's say you're working in e -com and you have a media buyer that charges $500 a month and you have a graphic designer that charges $100 a month and you need both of those people to work on the client's accounts to generate them profit. Then what you would do is you would make your setup fee $1,800 if you planned on doing a 90-day commission structure before introducing the retainer. That way, you don't lose any money. You still, you still at ground zero. The, the, the setup fee is not necessarily for us to actually make money. It's just for us to mitigate our risk so that we don't actually lose money working with them. Because you do not want to have a media buyer and pay them 600 bucks a month for three months and lose money on the client's account. I'm not suggesting with this strategy you do that at all. It's a very bad thing to do. Instead, we get the client to pay our overheads. And then this is the, the, the truth at this point is that we do then only profit when they do. And you say this to them and you say, look, we charge this setup fee. Now, before you have a sharp intake of breath, um, which should be understandable, we charge the setup fee for very good reasons. First of all, I have a team, I have overheads, and I want to make sure this is as risk-free as possible for you. But I also need to take into account my interests. And I'm sure you can understand that as a business owner. So I have to pay my team and, you know, I can't you know, whilst we're delivering for you, it's extremely difficult for me to do that if we haven't got funds to pay them because then we're only working on your profit. So yeah, you can you can go about it any way you want, but I've got a script below that we'll walk through soon. Um, this shouldn't be here, shouldn't say proceed. Um, I think this was supposed to say like, you then proceed to obviously sign them up and close them, but that's at the bottom here. So alternatively, um, you know, the other way to sort of do this is to continue outreaching as you normally would um, and booking calls for the retainer deal you might have. And then you use this whole method as a concession, which is a sort of way of negotiating. So if you've got a prospect that's on the fence and they seem like they aren't gonna buy, then you open up the Trojan horse option to them. You'd say something like, hey, John, well, I totally understand your concerns and I appreciate you're reluctant to pay this retainer. And the truth is, as I was in your situation, I would also be there. So I'm fully on board with that and I totally understand. From my perspective, though, I am extremely certain that we can deliver what we think we can deliver. Um, and I want you to share that certainty with me. So how about we do, I've got an option that I think would be much more preferable for you. I don't want to push you, but would you be happy to explore a different sort of way of doing this. You get their permission to share it and then you go on to explain, well, we've actually got a commission structure we reserve for people that are very specific and I think you could be good for it. And you, you know, proceed to go down that route, if that makes sense. Um, so then what you do is you close them on a commission deal for one to three months um, and then you proceed to get a setup fee. And then what you need to do is proceed to set up the retainer so it bills automatically, giving um, the, pay, the payment a trial period of however long the commission period is lasting for. So. If you, if you sign a client on this and they pay a $2,000 setup fee and you agree to a you know, $100 per appointment or a 10% ROAS fee or whatever it might be, 
for 60 days. What you then do is you tell the client, you're very transparent, you say, look, I'm gonna be honest, we do, we do get clients with the intention of getting them on board for our $2,000 a month retainer. And that's the, the reason that we, we do this is so we can introduce clients to how good we are. And then they have no problem paying that fee because we've proven it to them. Um, so what will happen 60 days from now, unless you cancel um, your contract with us, then we will start billing you $2,000 a month. And I want you to be very aware of that. And I want you to make sure that you're aware of that and you, you know it now. Are you okay with that? And they'll say yes or no, and then you can talk to them about it. And then they might ask what happens to the commission basis. And then you can either keep that as it is, or you can drop, drop it down a bit, maybe from 10% to 6% or $100 per appointment to $50. You know, you're going to have to come up with these negotiation points on your own. But my advice would be to standardize this. So figure out, like, don't, don't make it different for every client, um, unless it's a really big econ brand, and then you might want to do some negotiation. But like, you want to have a standard of what your setup fee is, what your incentive-based pricing is, what you charge per appointment if you're lead gen, what you would charge per co commission deal, like might be 30%, could be 50%, could be 5%. You know, you wanna you want to start to think this through and think about what makes sense for you. Consider your overheads. I can't give you these numbers because I don't know what overheads you have or what software costs you incur. But the key is to make sure that the setup fee covers your expenses for the client over the course of the agreed commission period. So if you know that it's going to cost you $2,000 over 60 days to run the client's account, then you charge them $2,000 in the setup fee. And you tell them that that money goes straight towards your overheads and that you as the owner of the company do not profit until they do. And if someone argues with that, then you say, hey, I understand. Um, but if that's, you know, if that's how you feel, then we may not be a good fit. Because I, as I need to have skin in the game as much as you do for this to work. And our incentives need to be perfectly aligned. And charging the setup fee is obviously a way of me covering my overheads. But it's also a way of indicating how committed you truly are to working with us. Because I want to make this as frictionless as possible for you. However, if you're not willing to put some skin in the game, then that indicates to me that you might not be the right fit for us anyway. And you just sort of, you know, there's all sorts of ways you can weave it. And the more you do this, the better you'll become. Um... So that's the model. And then the same thing applies to lead generation. Exactly the same workflow or principle applies. Um, but instead of working on a sale commission, you can charge per appointment, lead or show. So if we were doing this with Northflow getting started, um, I'd probably just do a pay per appointment or a pay per show. You know, and I just I'd sort of just say, hey, well, listen, we work purely on a pay on appointment basis and we generate deeply qualified prospects for you. And the only time money leaves your bank account is when someone books a call with you and shows up. Very hard to argue with that. The thing with outreach, people, like when you when you think about outreach and appointment booking, instead of looking for reasons to get people to say yes to a call, remove all reasons they have to say no. And the only way you can do that is with an offer that is impeccable. And people can't say no to this stuff, right? And if they do then, well, they're probably just not very good business people. So here are a few common questions. Um, I appreciate you might have some more that I might have missed the mark on or forgotten about. So, you know, if you do have further questions on this, then just pop them in the Facebook group um, or hop on one of the weekly Q&A calls um, and we can talk about this at length. Um, but here are a few things. So common questions. The first one, the first concern you probably have is, you know, like, how do I justify the setup fee? Like if the prospect is expecting a commission-based relationship, then how do I persuade someone to pay me an upfront payment, right? I mean, it's not an easy thing to do, of course, but it actually is easy when you know how. So, you know, you tell them that whilst you are willing to have some skin in the game, they need to have some as well. You know, we, like I said before, like a while ago, we don't, we don't want to make, we want to make the sales process as frictionless as possible. We want to remove as many obstacles as possible, but not to the point where there's nothing at all. We want the client to have to jump through a hurdle or two, because if they don't, then they're not committed to us. Clients are not clients until they, until the money hits our bank account. You know, in, in the sales training, in the emotional management section, we call this the fat lady principle. You know, when people celebrate deals before they go through. Like the only time a client is a client is when money from their bank account has entered your bank account. Until that moment happens, until that stripe submit button has been pressed, they are not on board as a client. I don't care what they say, I don't care what they sign, until they pay you, they are not a client. So you can't go ahead and have a verbal agreement or even a written agreement with a business owner that they're going to pay you 10% of whatever it is and they'll try their best to weave their way out of paying that setup fee. You must expect them to try and do it. But you have to be firm in your standing. 
And don't be afraid to lose the potential client because you probably, by standing your ground, you stand a better chance of closing them, right? So do not ever, and I can't stress this enough, you know, I talked about we're gonna have some rules in this video and I've, I've mentioned a few throughout here, but this is the main one. Do not sign a Trojan horse retainer client without them paying a setup fee of a tangible amount. I'm not talking like $200 or $500, $1,500 minimum. Do not do it. If someone, if someone, they'll try and they'll try and weave all their way out of it or weave their way, out, they just will. And you have to accept that they're going to try and do it because we're all business owners. We want to save money, um, and it slightly goes against the expectations. But it's so so important that they pay. So make sure they do. You know, you cannot go completing hours and hours of work and set up with no tangible commitment from the client. At the same time, you have a team to pay. You have overheads. You know, like if you think about this from. Like you can say we don't profit until you do because the business profit is not your personal income. So let's say that your salary in your agency is $1,000 a month and you have your agency as a business entity and then you have you, right? So if that's the case and then you're gonna be doing three months of work for the client, then you have to pay yourself. So the business doesn't profit on the setup fee. You make the money as your salary because you have to live. You, know, you, you can't just work for free or work for nothing. And bear in mind, of course, you're gonna get money from the commission basis if you're good, so it's all fine. But you see where I'm going with that. So as the owner of the agency, you can say to the client, look, I'm comfortable providing like a pay on result work for you, but you know, I need to make sure my team can put food on the table for crying out loud. Like, you know, I am, as the owner of the agency, more than happy to jump into this with you and take a risk but I do not ask my team to do the same thing because they, I am responsible for them and I have to care for them as my family because they're my team. And I can't just ask them to, to take this risk with me. So, you know, we have to have some skin in the game. So then you're gonna ask the question, like well, you might ask this to yourself, like how do I justify the retainers of the client after the commission based period is up? And the thing about this, the thing about the, the, the retainer, everyone freaks out about this because they think that the client won't want to pay the retainer after like two months or three months of ROAS work or commission-based work. Um, so like, how are you going to be panicking? Like, oh shit, are they actually going to pay it? Is it going to come through? The thing is, is that you don't have to justify this retainer, your results will. You know, if you clearly set expectations from the get-go that the retainer is tied into the deal, then the client won't get angry when you start charging them. If they try to negotiate, like if you get towards the, the point at which they're gonna charge the retainer and the client's like, oh, hey, I, I wanna extend this for a month before I pay you. You know, I would just wanna give it like one or two more weeks before, um, before we start paying you the retainer just to see how this week rolls out. You know, if they start doing that, then you just say no. You know, you set the terms. When you get them on board, you sign the contract, you get, a, and this is important, get a doc signed, get this written up by a lawyer or do it yourself. It's not hard to write this stuff, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and get them to sign the contract, get the expectations set, and just deliver them incredible results. And as long as you set expectations properly and deliver good results, then they're not gonna have a problem paying you. Business owners don't mind paying for services that produce them the result they want. This is something we all have to understand as agency owners. Business owners are actually, they quite enjoy spending money on things that produce results for them. Like if you think about, if you think about, um, if you think about a time that you spent money on something, it could be this course, for example, and it's actually worked for you, then you, you see that expense as a positive experience. Yeah, sure, it's a bit painful in the, in the short term because you have to pay money for something that you're not sure is gonna work or not, but the beauty of this model is that the client already knows it works. So they're, gonna, they're paying you for a service that they already have justified in their head. You've got a good relationship with them and you've built that with them. They already have paid you money through the commission base. They've already paid you a setup fee. And all you have to do from that point onwards is just deliver on your promise. And if you do that, then the retainer will stay. And it helps to get a contract docu-signed to this effect. You know, this contract doesn't have to be anything fancy, um, just something that clearly states the terms and the time frame and the amount at which the retainer will be introduced and how it will be charged. So like, if you're writing the contract out, don't stress about getting this all complicated. All you have to do is put the term, which is gonna be the setup fee, which is what they've already paid you because we should get the payment before the contract goes out. The setup fee, um, the commission fee, right? How much you're gonna be charging them, how long the commission fee will be in play for, so it might be 60 days. The retainer fee, how much that amounts to, when it will be introduced, how long it will last, 
unless you, unless you do like, because you can always settle this right into a six month contract after the two month period is up. So you can have two contracts in one of that makes sense. Um, if you have any concerns around writing this stuff out, just let us know. Um, we don't actually have anything drafted for this specifically for different niches. Um, but you know, maybe write one up yourself and then we can take a look at it. But you know, we're not lawyers or anything. So you might want to have that one checked out by people who do this stuff for a living. Um, we can't, you know, I can't, we can't look at legal agreements here and tell you that you should do this or you should do that because it's not, A, it's not right and B, it's not our profession. Um, but having said that, you know, I've written a lot of North Flow's legal agreements um, and they're just, you know, at this level of business, when you're just charging like less than 10K or whatever, it really doesn't have to be complicated, you know? So what percentage should I charge um, or what should I charge per appointment, whatever it might be? Honestly, this is up to you. You know, you just charge what you feel is fair and what you feel you can get from the client. Um, if you are going to start to standardize this, like if you're in the lead gen space, um, then make sure you charge the same for every client, um, you know, standardization scales. So why wouldn't we do that? Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't really give you an anchor here. It's going to be contextual entirely upon the deal and you have to use the knowledge of your niche, um, the lifetime value of their customers and what they're willing to pay basically, um, which is fine. So, you know, what happens to the percentage commission um, or the, the fee or the pay on results thing after the agreement period is up? So like, you know, if you do a 60 day agreement, then what happens after that once the retainer kicks in? This is entirely up to you, right? You can either keep on the commission or maybe drop it a little if the client is persistent during negotiation. So honestly, I would go to people, I'd be like, hey, you know, we're gonna charge 25% ROAS fee or performance-based deal. Um, and after three months of that, um, we're going to introduce a retainer of $3,000 a month. Um, and then we're going to drop that performance fee from 25 to 15%. Um, and then that's, you know, that's what we're going to do. Sound good? You know, I'm going to prove to you for three months that we can actually make you more money than you could probably ever imagine working with an agency. And if we can deliver that promise for you, then you're going to be happy to pay us. And then they will, because if you do it and you can, this is the thing, it all comes back to service delivery, right? This doesn't work if you can't deliver on promises. Um, so yeah, so then um, how do I go about asking for the payment after the grace period? So the grace period is the period at which the client is just paying you on commission. Could be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever it might be. Um, honestly, you don't have to go about asking for the payment. You should set up automatic billing with a trial period, right? So you can do this in pay funnels. Um, you know, this is the software that we use um, to integrate with Stripe and charge payments. So if you're not using pay funnels, um, I'd strongly advise you do. Um, it's very good, it integrates with Stripe. But I think in Stripe, you can probably set up delayed invoices. Um, but all you do is you set up a payment link that has a delay of like 60 or 90 days, and then it starts charging them the monthly retainer after that period. And you get this link filled in and set up at the very get-go. So in the client's mind, they've already paid you the retainer because they've already filled out a link that says they're gonna do it. We do not want to go to the client in 60 days and start sending them bloody PayPal invoices or Stripe invoices to get it to get it paid. It needs to be automatic, otherwise it gives them a false sense of power that they can just stop it. It's very subtle, it's very subconscious, but it's really important that you don't need to ask for the payment. You know, the, the client knows it's happening, they're gonna make a note of it, it will be on their calendar, I promise you they'll remember when they're paying you. Um, so yeah really important. And you know, in the lead up to two weeks before you start charging the retainer, might maybe just step your foot on the gas with client support, check in calls, keeping them happy, doesn't hurt. So this is the script for when the clients ask if they can move forward. So this is sort of like how we're gonna close them on this deal. Um, the rest of the sales script will stay the same for those of you that have seen the sales training. If, if you haven't, go and watch it. Um, but this is how I would position it. So if I was selling this, um, this is how I go. So if someone said to me, so, you know, how does this work? Like, what do you charge? Then we're gonna say this. So, so as you're aware, John, we work on a commission basis. We do this to demonstrate insane levels of confidence in our service and, you know, to make you feel comfortable working with us initially. Um, now, for long-term consistency in our business, we do charge clients retainers, right? But for the first 90 days, we'll deliver everything on a pay on results basis and we charge 25% or $50 per lead for this. So after the 90 day period, we'll introduce a monthly retainer of $2,000 a month and the 20% um, commission we charge drops down to 10%. And that's how we work and that's how we sign up clients and that's how our sales process works. Now, we do require a setup fee to kick things off as this demonstrates commitment from clients and this is used to cover the overheads associated with handling your account without a monthly retainer. 
So this is where these reasons start kicking in, right? We charge a setup fee because we have to look after our team, we have to cover overheads, and we also have to make sure that you're committed to working with us, okay? And you have to give them those reasons, otherwise they won't do it. And after all, I'm happy to front the risk as the owner of the agency, but I don't expect my team to do that as well. So the setup fee goes straight into my team's pocket, not mine. Now the setup fee is $3,000. However, we found that clients who make decisions quickly always are the best clients for us. So if you can make a decision to move forward today, then it's only $1,500. And that gets you set up. We'll get everything done. We'll work on a commission basis for 90 days. And after that 90 day period, we'll introduce the retainer drop the commission and keep you on board for the next five years. How does that sound? <laughs> that's like, that's how you want to close this thing. So that's um that's the cheat sheet for the Trojan horse retainers. Um, you can go to Google Docs and make a copy of this if you want to. Um, but this, this method it is, it took me a long time to see this because it's been right in front of my eyes for so long. Um, because, you know, the, the way to sort of, um, the way to sort of look at this, right, is to, is to think about it in like a non-binary sense. So like if I hop over here um, to this, this whiteboard app, right? We've got this over here and we've got this over here. So over here, we've got retainer, right? This is, this is agencies that charge, you know, monthly payments, which is pretty much everyone. And then over here, we've got like um, performance-based stuff, right? Slash commission. And you've got some people that work on commission. Now, what we're doing, I mean, so first of all, a lot of e-com agencies, a lot of people will do this and they'll, they'll be non-binary and they'll combine both of these polls together and they'll sort of have a retainer and a percentage fee as well, which is great. Um, but if you want to make this as seamless as possible, you can literally just marry these two into the middle and you do this for the first, you know, three months and then you do this for the next 12. And it's honestly, and you just you just combine these two and it's such a good straightforward way of getting that, Trojan horse past the wall because when we're when we're like signing clients when we're getting people on the phone and signing them up and you know whether it's booking the appointment or getting them closed we've got to realize that the prospects have these big walls up right this this is where the money is and this is where we are and to get to the money right we have to get through this damn wall and everybody tries to go through this wall head on they just go ahead and they're like hey you know pay me this money pay me this money, pay me this money. And they'll just they'll just keep sort of shouting that at the wall until eventually someone comes along and just pays them the money. But with this strategy, what we get to do, right, is we get to sort of, I don't know, I don't even know what sort of metaphor you could use here, but we find a sort of loophole through the wall. And we sort of like, you know, if we dig underground or maybe we just, you know, the Trojan horse method here is just you get some questionable looking trampoline you just fly over the wall and that's how you get to the money and this trampoline here or the the shovel you use to dig under the wall represents the trojan horse model it's saying to people hey i will work for you on a commission basis and listen i want you to know that long term i want that juicy retainer that's how we make money that's how my business has longevity and you know that as well as i do and i'm going to be honest and transparent with you not only in this call but throughout our entire working relationship because it's what you deserve now I don't expect you to pay me a fat retainer until I've genuinely proven to you that I can deliver results better than you could get anywhere else. So I'm happy to do that for a while and then, you know, I'm in it for the long haul. So by using that language and by using that offer, we jump over the wall or we go under it or we just smash the whole thing down altogether. And the prospect has no choice but to give us their money because we have been intelligent. Okay, so that's just a, um, a very questionable form of art there, but I hope you can sort of understand where I'm coming from because, you know, it's it's really useful to know and, you know, that's basically how it works. So that is the Trojan Horse Retainer Model. Um, it's, it's one that has taken me a long time to think up um, and sort of think through and develop um, because, you know, I've been thinking a lot recently about offers and appointment booking and one strategy that I like to use to, to come, because we've, we've got a few of these strategies in the program now, whether it's Loom, whether it's the Imperium approach and the sales stuff we use. And I, I get, a, get questions a lot from, from clients and people saying, how, how the hell would you come up with this stuff? Like, how do you come up with this strategy or see it? And honestly, it's just, you just think. You just sit in a room for like six hours with a paper and a pen and you, you ask yourself a question or you define a problem, which is appointment booking is harder than it should be why is that 
and then you just ask that question and you just do nothing but sit and think about that problem for six hours. You write down all your ideas, you go to sleep and then randomly when you're at the gym the next day, this idea just clicks into your mind. And that's exactly what happened here. I was like, I was, I was thinking to myself, I was like, there has to be, there has to be this, this middle ground or a strategy that you can use to, you know, get people in the door and get them on board. And then it clicked. I was like, oh, this, what did the Greeks do to Troy? You know, back in, back in the ancient myth, what do they do? Well, they, they packaged up, you know, they wanted to get soldiers in the wall. They couldn't do it by running at the wall. So they just hid them. You know, the retainer is hidden, right? It's not hidden because the client knows it's there. It's a slightly different analogy, but the principle applies. The client can't see the retainer. They see that you've given them this crazy gift, this crazy offer that every business owner basically dreams of. And, um, and they buy it and they, they invest in it. And then we deliver such an insane result that they have no choice but to give us continuous money and cash flow. So that's everything for this video. Um, I hope this one's been useful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you have any questions around it, then pop them in the group, hop on one of the Q&A calls, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. So thanks for watching this one. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.